Welcome to Off Track. I'm your host, Dave Neal, and a man that needs absolutely no introduction at all. KRT six time world champion, Jonathan Ray. Jonathan, welcome to Off Track, mate. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Please tell me from the rider's perspective, how's the season been so far? Oh, tough. Proper tough. You know, because we expected that this year's going to be difficult, but not as difficult as it's been. Um, and it's come backwards, actually, because I started off fighting for a race victory in Phillip Island in the wet. And since then, it's been tough. You know, I haven't had many podiums. Um, but worse than that, the race winning margin is too big. You know, the gap to Alvaro and Ducati is um, it's out of reach. So change of mentality is involved but because, you know, I can't just keep turning up and getting battered and getting pissed off, if you like. You know, right now we're not a, a race winning package myself the bike and team so we need to improve and team are doing everything you know i've no um no gripes about that you know we've done a lot of testing but um technically the biggest area we need improvement is um from the engine side you know just the free time we lose in acceleration zones but uh aside from that it's also in the hotter conditions we seem to struggle more with the front tire Always the Kawasaki prefers a, a harder front tire option. And the evolution of Pirelli now in the last years has been softer, softer, softer. So um, just them challenges. So readjusting your mindset, targets, uh, starting to be at peace with that. It's a different challenge. And hopefully we can now regularly keep fighting for the podium and battling for that top three in the championship. And then hope we can do something over the off season. Hopefully so. How do you change your approach to that? Because you've come from such a, a, a winning uh, career so far to change the approach and change the mindset to accept that you're not quite going to be where you used to be and you've got to get back to that. How do you make yourself at peace with that? Well, you have to. There's, it's like sink or swim. It's either the options to, to walk away from the sport Um or roll your sleeves up and get stuck in. There's a part of me that really wants to believe in the fairy tale that I can bring Kawasaki back to that, you know, and feel like my job's done. I don't want the the tap on this dream and career to just to stop. I feel I'm riding really good right now and um, certainly at home and off the bike, the effort's going in from, from all sides, from my side, the team, but just at track right now, Ducati just have that, um, distinct advantage and also Alvaro is doing a very good job to extract it but um it doesn't it doesn't take you don't have to be too clever to work out you know guys in the paddock that are your know, top rack shouldn't be getting beat for example by margins he is you know he's an incredible talent um other riders in the paddock that I highly rate are really struggling so it just always depends on your circumstances and um you know, right now we need to improve. And, you know, Alex has just signed again for for next year. So the team stays um, as is. So hopefully we can kick on now, put heads together and, and try and make inroads and improve the bike. Is that something that's that's quite a um, positive move for you as well, to have the same teammate again, both on the same bike, understanding the problems that, that the bike has or what it needs more than anything. Is that something that, that's giving you a little bit of a, a push on now? Yeah, balance is good, but also I think as a teammate, priority is um, you need a competitive teammate. You need someone that's really competitive because that pushes you on, pushes him on, and in the end, the team. Almost more important than that, you need a teammate that um, respects you. You have to have respect in the team. You know, for for me, Alex is one of the best teammates I've had from atmosphere point of view and everything really. So it's good. It's good that it's for me a natural progression that he continues and he understands as well that the bike's not um, what it once was, and he's not a guy that bags bags the team or bags the bike out in fact he's he's pretty hard on himself at times as well so it's um it's a case of just working together with himself myself our, our crews and trying to excuse the pun but you know make kawasaki great again it's, it's not a pun it's the right thing isn't it you've had so much success with it with the brand over the years um just how difficult is it? sometimes i don't think people understand or the fans understand just how difficult it is to race at world superbike level 
and you look at Danilo Petrucci coming in, I know you see what Alvaro's done, but, but the, the level is strong in World Superbike. What's it like from your perspective? It is, right? And it's probably not popular opinion, but I, I really believe that it's a whole package that has to be right for anybody to be competitive. You know, and you know, I could, you know, I don't follow the domestic championship that closely, so I'm not exactly sure who the next kitty is that's coming through. But no joke, if you put the right guy in the right bike and package and people and a little bit of time and confidence, he'll do good anywhere. Superbike, of course, it's competitive right now, but it's not light years ahead. You know, it's same as MotoGP. I really feel a handful or more riders even given the chance to go to MotoGP and and trusted and good at, good teams and and time and infrastructure can be good. So I really do feel it is all about that. And sometimes earlier in my career, when I was thinking about my career path, you know, what the best way was, the best way is just to be the most competitive place you can be because you want to try and have a positive career trajectory you know you want to always go forward it's very hard to think about i'll make a side step or a step back to go too forward it's not like that racing you know you're almost only as good as your last race and um so it's important to always be with really good teams i've been blessed you know i left a great team in the uk when i came here and, and joined the official honda team and then spent many years there and then came to the official kawasaki team but um no doubt in my mind as competitive as World Superbike is, there's so much unearthed talent out there that hasn't had the opportunities that maybe I've had or other riders have had. And um, yeah, I feel very fortunate and blessed to have had them opportunities. With the Kawasaki in the trim that it's in now, how do you see this season progressing? Well, I feel it's tough. You know, it's tough to know that, um, that we're up against it. It's always nice because I've always been in the position before, maybe not so much last year, but on the grid, knowing that if I do everything right, I can win a race. But the situation I and Superbike is, with the regulations being so tight on standard machines, running so many standard components inside the engine, not having concessions um, means you're almost only as good as the production bike you build. You know, I mean, there's such polarity between retail prices of bikes that are on the market and and our bike, let's say, it's very hard to be competitive. So, um, you know, going forward, I feel we have a bike that can compete for the podium for sure. And, and I want to target a race win before the end of the year. You know, I want to win a race. I haven't gone through a year in my career without winning one, so be huge kick in the balls not to win a race this year and um it, it won't be for the lack of trying from not just from my part but the team the team deserve it as well because in good times and bad the i never feel the point the fingers pointed you know they're always trying to pick me up trying to get the best out of me and everybody else around us so um be would be amazing if that happened but with a lot of work to do to be continually battering the door of race wins Every season you have to graft for race wins and to progress through the season. But And this isn't the first season you've had where you've had to dig really deep. But is there something that you've found out about yourself in this season for not having to, to dig that deep for so long? Um, sometimes I look and think, not pat on the back, but I, I'm still as ruthless and committed as I was when I was 20 years old. You know, I I treated Misano last lap with Dominic Agatha like it was a championship race for the win. You know, I went bar to bar with Alex and Mandalika for like a ninth place on the last lap. You know, it means a lot. Every point means a lot. And I haven't just given up and put my feet up and think, well, you know, this is this is what we have. I still want to rinse everything out, leave everything out there. And, you know, if I can walk away from the race weekend, I'm... Sunday night, knowing that I've given my all, and I can't be disappointed. Um, so it's just not giving up because I feel, I feel, the moment that happens, then you're on a downward spiral. You know, you have to keep confidence that tomorrow's going to be a better day. Um, and racing is all about confidence. You know, if and you can get the feeling in the bike and the confidence together, you can make a step. And then if the team actually really improves the bike, you can make two steps. And it's it's a, 
it's important to get that momentum back again. So as you sat in um, in Villicum Airport at the end in the middle of October and you're looking back over the season, what's gonna what's got to happen to give you satisfaction for 2023? That's a very good question. Um, maturely, right? I think <laughs> if I get to the end of this year healthy injury-free, and staying on the podium much more in the second part of the year than the first, that will be success for me. Um, okay, things I can't control, but I can't control others, but I want to be in the top three in the championship. You know, top three in the world is, is great. Top five in the world is great. It's a great championship, but we're not far away now from that top three. Alvaro is um, as good as... 23 world champion already and top racks that a little bit far um we threw away too many points at times this year but if i can battle in that top three at the end of the year then um i'll um i'll probably enjoy myself quite a lot on sunday night in villicum brilliant jonathan we wish you all the best for the rest of the season thank you so much for your time and let's hope we can get onto the top of that box by the end of the season cheers, great to see thank, thank you. you so much cheers man Oh, fuck yeah, no, we're not ready. Oh, he's telling me he's not ready for this, but I know he is. Was it, it 10 years this year since you were British Superbike champion, Alex Lowe's? Bloody hell, let's start with that sort of stuff. <laughs> that, <that's... laughs> I want to go now. Um, Kawasaki Racing Team, Alex Lowe's, mate, welcome to Off Track. Is it 10 years? 2013, was it not? Yeah, yeah it was. Don't know about them, still going. <laughs> you haven't yeah, done bad, have you? Yeah. As, as, as we sat here in uh, in Kawasaki Racing Team Hospitality, done in still, still dragging it out, 10 well, years on. Yeah. When you got another deal as well. Another deal announced today. Thank you very much. So, yes, um, it's going well. I think so. Yeah. How's the season been so far? Bit tough. Do you know what? Actually, riding wise, feel like I'm riding well, enjoying it. A couple of mistakes I'd like not to have made, but we're sort of on the limit now. With, you know, John has made a few, I've made a few. And the, the, the benchmark and the reference for Kawasaki because of the job they've done with Tom, with Jonathan, Johnny himself, you know, is so, the expectation is so high when other people do a jo good job, which is part of the game, it's sort of, not under pressure, but you, you want to get back, you want to get back to that. And uh, so we've been pushing hard, pushing hard with the bike. It's natural in production series that, as we've seen in the last 30 years, rules go up and down and, and different manufacturers have strong points. But we're, they're doing a good job. KLT, Kawasaki, they're doing a, a good job. And uh, it's almost it's the same effort to win as it is to, to, to struggle, but it almost feels more. So we're uh, yeah, we're not at the easiest season. One podium in Indonesia is the only time I've been on the podium, and that was in the, in the sprint race. A couple of decent weekends in, in Barcelona, but then a couple of mistakes just trying to push it and force it a little bit. But... That's my style of it as well. I don't want to settle for it. In the World Superbike Race, and if you settle for a result, you finish 12th. You know, there's, there's good guys finishing 13th, 12th, 13th, 14th. So I don't really like that. I need to be like that a bit more. But uh, I love the challenge. I'm enjoying riding, like I said, and I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Do you think people underestimate the level of racing here? Yeah. Yeah, I think... Well, you know what? Racing's weird. It's all about confidence and the right package. It's, it, it's, it's having the right package at the right time with the right people around you to take advantage of it. And if you get confidence, it's a, it's that half second magic tool that you just can't buy from anywhere. And, and that's what you're seeing with Bautista at the minute with his package and Johnny for so many years. But it's, it, it is, it's a competitive series. It's, it's hard to be, um, it, what I found a little bit hard is from the outside, people still think, and obviously careful how I say it, but the truth is it's Kawasaki from, the years of winning every week and, and Johnny used to win honestly I know I was on trying to race against him he used to win some races well easier a little bit probably like Alvaro is now but it's not like that now and it's a difficult bike to manage it's an older bike I'm dragging a lot out of it so I feel like the effort and the way I'm riding has not from the outside if you just look at the results and without looking taking a step back it, it's it, it's disappointing but when you're here and you know what's going on I think that it's um I like that challenge, but I think it's, yeah, it's, we always want to be doing better, but I think it's, yeah, it's, it's going all right. That's nearly maturity. I'm older, aren't I? Older. I'm older, a little bit more mature, but I still feel like I'm, I'm pretty fast. 
I think that's been proven. You don't get it. You don't, get, you don't get take idea. World Superbike podiums well, by not being. Well, what happened was, Sam says to me, I might come to World Superbike next year. And I was just going to stop and get fat early and think, right, <laughs> send Cos out working all the time. She's working anyway, obviously, but I'll stay in with the kids, get a bit fat. Then Sam said, I'm coming to World Superbike. I thought, no chance. No, I'm no, not no, leaving. No, 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 I need no, no, to, no. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's not a true story, but if Sam did come to World Superbike, yes. I'd love to race against him, but it's, I'm, I'm very happy to... <laughs> You that's know, there's a naked forfeit for this. That's that is a very professional. That's a very. <laughs> that's Ava. Sorry, everyone, but that's my the only. My phone's on silent unless the <laughs> boss rings me, which is also known as my wife. So when you watch this, cos thanks for that. Um, and she's obviously here somewhere with the two youngsters. But yeah, where was we before she really interrupted us? <laughs> the, well, you were talking about the finishing and getting fat. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Not ready for that yet. <laughs> no, honestly, on an honest note with Kawasaki, the relationship's going well. We're actually inside the team. Apart from the results, everything's going well. I've got a good relationship with Jonathan. We understand well the reasons why we're not performing like we want to be. We're working hard on all the small details to get back there. I'm enjoying it as much as I ever have. I've got a good balance between my personal life and my racing. I still feel fast. I'm still mega motivated to get out and ride the bike. And it's, a, it's I'm very grateful. And it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to have signed one more year. So that's the the, the truth. But I think it, it's quite refreshing that, that you're in the moment enough to go, do you know what? I'm really enjoying it. This is where I deserve to be. This is what I got. You got another year on the contract. To, to race in green again for 2024. You don't know what the package is going to be yeah. in terms of the bike, yeah. but the positivity, that's never changed in all the time that I've known you. No, it's never changed. And you know, we just say it's 10 years since I, I won BSB. I wish I could have enjoyed it a bit more then because when you're younger, you can't. And you can't buy experience on life. When you, your parents say to you at school, oh, enjoy it, the best times of your life. You're like, no, it's not. Can't wait to leave this place. And then you get old and you think, Hey, up every day with my mates every day doing a bit of work and, and and getting that you don't get that once you get responsibilities and it gets worse and if you could buy experience it'd be very expensive wouldn't it yes. so now i'm at that place where i can i, I can really appreciate it and, and i'm i like the fact that i'm i'm in that situation in my life but i think that it's made me yeah, it's made me a better rider i think a better person i think that kawasaki could have gone down the road of choosing a young guy to put next to Jonathan. Jonathan's not going to ride forever. And you'd have gone, fair enough. And I'd have gone, fair enough. No problem. But what I really like and appreciate from them is they understand not the just the fan view of it. They understand what's going on. They really appreciate the effort I put in, the motivation I have, how hard I work. And that means a lot to me. It means so much to me because you can't always win. You can't all be six-time world champion like Johnny. So everyone else is just grafting every day. And, and you know, as races, it's your life's based on the results. So you can be disappointed with that. So to put, keep putting the constant, constant effort in every time and get rewarded with another contract and feel like it's coming back at this stage of my career, I, I, I like that. I'm sort of quite happy with myself for that. And, and I, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I like about the, the current deal. But. A lot of the time you find with, with racing and, and talking to a lot of the riders, that they're always looking for the next ride, they're always looking ahead and they want to do this and that's not enough and that's not enough. How, have you, how is it that you've come to that kind of mindset now? Is it the family side of things that, that makes you almost content yeah. do, but do happy you realize, and motivated at the same time? Do you, know you realise, which is something that will be controversial and you want to sit there and just and, and have big dreams. I have big dreams, but I've got my experience of racing my brother's experience of racing, which I live it with him. I'm so close to him. I've got, I feel like I've got two careers. And what you realize is it's never as good when you do good and it's never as bad when it goes bad. But you have a bad race and you're like suicidal and you, you, it affects your life. But then you realize after two days, if you won on Sunday or you finish sixth, on Tuesday morning, when you're changing the kids' nappy or you maybe haven't got kids, but you go into the gym, the only why it can make a difference is if you want it to because no one else really cares no one really cares your friends and family care and but you do it for yourself and when you realize that you, you do it for yourself you get the best results for yourself but actually there's so much more to life it don't mean you try any less harder you don't try i try it hard every time i get on the bike but you learn to understand that it can still be everything but then nothing at the same time and in 10 years time when i've retired and I'll be able to say, oh, I used to be all right on a bike. Or I used to. But you need to be able to 
enjoy the other side of your life as well. And I'm at that stage where I can do that now. And by being able to do that, I'm a better person off the bike, on the bike, and in general. And I don't really know. I guess the experiences of me, my brother, he's obviously, I'm super proud of him and what he's done. And he's had some super low times. And it, we, we're just two kids that wanted to make a living out of race. Our dream was to race motorbikes. We've, he's won some Grand Prix's and, but reality is when we play golf on a Tuesday morning, we're still the same kids that love riding bikes and it, it, that don't change. And it can't, just because the results are good or bad, you can't let that change your life. And so when you think like that, everything becomes a bit easier. Well, so it's never easy, but everything never, becomes a bit more uh, clear, let's say. Yeah, I still can't think of the word that, I'm, that I want. It becomes much more. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not the great with words sometimes. That said, if he does come to World Street back next year, that might change. <laughs> I well, this this takes me on to to an, another little angle because a, a, a little birdie tells me that in the gym you turn up before everybody else. That you still, even at the mature age that you are, yeah. you are still kicking the ass out of the gym because I get told what you do before everybody else gets in. It's like, I've done this already. Like Where have you in. always been? Yeah, well, I don't feel like I've been blessed with natural talent, really. I can ride a bike quite fast, but I feel like I've got good work ethic. I enjoy going fast, but I, I just, I'm just i a grafter, really. So I've managed to get my results by just grafting a bit. And I think that I, I class being able to be a professional racer is such a privilege. It's, not, it's so easy for me to get up in the morning and give it everything I've got every day. That's like the standard. And then if I do that, whatever I achieve and people's opinion on that don't really matter because if I've done everything I can every day, I'm happy with that. But I, take, I try to take that approach with being a dad or a husband or whatever. And, and yeah, I like, to, I like just to get in before the gym and just let them know that I've just done a bit more than they have. And I, and I love that. Ben I'm a bit Curry. obsessed, I guess. Then. Ben Curry. Yeah. Our co-host on the show who's not well, unfortunately not, get, not here let's today. Let's not get into it. With, let's not get into about <laughs> Ben's training, which actually he, he's a grafter as well, but we're not getting into it. We're not going to get into it. Why? Yeah, I'm just... No, to be fair, <laughs> he's... A, he's a, <laughs> The last couple of years since he's, he's, he's been training with us in, in Derby with, with KFG Fitness, he's, he's, he's been good and I've been enjoying it. But he's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I like, I, I, you know, I'm not, how old's Ben? 26? Yeah, so I'm 26. Like, yeah. So I'm a bit older than him, but I feel like I'm like a, trying to set a good example. That's what I feel like. I shouldn't admit that, but I feel like I'm trying to set a good example. And you know, one of the things I do really enjoy, I've made so many mistakes in racing. I still do, unfortunately. It's just, my brother's the same but I try to pass on I've done stuff wrong done stuff right and I try to pass on a lot of that and it's one thing you know, Ben's just one example of people coming I, I, I love to try to pass on a little bit of, of that and uh, yeah training with Ben's been good I, I do like to <laughs> I like to give it he's, he's well aware of that yeah. <laughs> he knows as soon as he steps in that he's, you've already been in there he's a good lad <laughs> he's got a bit further to travel than you though he he comes over from trouble. North Wales, and they yeah. say he's. But I do like to wind him up saying I did that every morning before work when I was younger, which I did. So I'd, he can't even use that. He you hates can't. it. He tries to give me all that. I'm like, no, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. He's great. We wish it would have been great to have him here, but unfortunately, he's working today. So it would have been great to have him alongside you because I could have just exited to the side and just let you two. each other. Yeah, for exactly. Half an hour. Yeah. It would it would make uh, it would make entertaining viewing. That's for sure. Um, you, you quite openly admitted that you know, there's times that you've made mistakes. Yeah. Um, some people find that difficult to admit yeah. but if, if there was one decision that you could change what would it be on track decision off track decision or ah, i wouldn't honestly i'm not someone that, that looks it like that i think i don't like the the um, you get a lot of stick and abuse now on social media if you make mistakes and it, it, it affects me more about my brother my brother crashes a lot but but Say crashes a lot, makes mistakes, but, but he's trying to win a Grand Prix. It's not easy to do, really. It's so easy to have a, it's so easy for people to have an opinion on when you do make mistakes. And but when you see what how much more goes into it, I I don't really see mistakes as, as mistakes like a lot of people do. You shouldn't make mistakes. You've been doing it a long time, yeah, but you're trying to achieve something and you you're trying to push yourself every day and you're trying to strive to do a bit better. If you just roll around in tenth, eleventh place, and say, you know what? didn't feel right today and people argue at that point and say well your job is to finish yeah but just there's a fine line between what finishing and sort of our class almost is, is giving in if you settle for a result like that so in terms of if i had to really say a mistake 
Or even a decision. If I had to think of a decision that I wouldn't have done. Because mistakes, that, that happens. That's a culmination of things, but a decision that you've made that you could change again. Uh, not, not, not one decision because I've been so lucky in all my career. I've been really, really, really lucky to have the opportunities I've had. And the decisions I've made have been the best ones I could have done at that time. But I wish my brother would have stayed in Motor 2 instead of going to Aprilia Motor GP. Because, and I can talk about him a lot easier than me because he could have, he, he's got the talent and the speed to have challenged when he was mid 20s for, for Moto 2 World Title. He did anyway after coming back years later. And if he would have stayed 17, 18 in Moto 2, I think he'd have had a better Moto GP opportunity. And, and I think it would, his career would have been different. I think the people that he's beat consistently that are now doing well in Moto GP, now the bikes have changed. I don't want to say they're easier to ride, but they're different to ride with electronics and aerodynamics. I'd have loved to have seen Sam have a, a different, because that affected him for a long time. It, it, it wasn't a good opportunity. He got a lot of injuries, broke his, he had problems straight away from the first test with, and there's always more to it. It took him a lot to come back from that. So I wish for him that was a bit different, but for me, from my side, can't complain. Do you find it frustrating that it's difficult to put across how much effort goes into racing a motorcycle and when things do go wrong, it, it's it's no, hard for I, I don't find it regular people to understand just how much effort you're putting in. No, I don't find it frustrating okay. because I'm just as bad when I watch football and think I could do that. And guess what? I, I've got two left feet. I could, I, there's no way I could do that. I'm like a toe punt central when I try and play football. But it's a natural thing as a fan and everyone's entitled to the opinion of, of what's happening. And it don't bother me because anyone that wants to give that opinion, if they spent any time with me and knew my situation and knew what I put into it, knew how I was as a person, it would be different. But I don't need to worry about explaining that to everyone that gives me criticism. They're fully entitled to that. And no problem. I, I, I'm, it doesn't, doesn't worry me about that. If, if somebody wanted to sit next to me and tell me that, I'd say, explain my opinion. And, and that's it. That's, that's life. And I, I wouldn't say it frustrates me. I think that as a general rule in motorcycle racing, people probably don't quite realize what goes in from a mental side. Physically, you know, there's loads of people that are fit now. It's sort of a standard thing to be at a certain level of fitness, which probably wasn't in 20, 30 years ago. And from the actual riding side, you get a sense if, you, if, you, if you're passionate about bikes, you ride on the street, you ride on track. It's the same stuff, just going a little bit faster. But the mental, mental side, when you've got all the effort, the big, you know, the big... You know, the, the full projects that are behind these teams and the effort of, of 30, 40, 50 people that's going in and it's just down to you on the track, probably when you're not feeling confident, the bike doesn't quite feel as good. The mental side of it is a lot bigger, or say it's a lot harder than people think, I would say. And obviously more people nowadays are more open to, to speak about it. But I would say that that's probably, people think because you're racing motorbike, you don't care about that side, but you're just as vulnerable as anyone else in any walk of life. So I'd say that side frustrates me, but in general, I'm happy for any sort of support. If people are watching bike racing, I'm happy so they can have whatever opinion they want. Perfect. Just to finish off, same question that I asked of Jonathan. You sat in the airport at Villicom at the end of the season. When yeah. you look back, yeah. what's going to make you satisfied on the season? A few more podiums. Um, battling with Jonathan as much as I can. It's always nice to, uh, to, to nip him a few times. This year, I've had a couple of good battles. Um, if I can be pushing him, pushing the project, a few more podiums, and then that'll be, yeah. I don't like to say that's just how it is. So if, you know, I, I want to win another World Superbike race. I know it sounds, obviously you want to win every weekend, but there's only one guy apart from when he crashed that's won a race this year. So that, that, there's not many to be, to be picking at, but win another race, I'll be, uh, I've not won a race in World Superbike since the kids were born. So I could just, at least one more of them, I'll be happy. Brilliant. Well, let's hope that comes true for this yeah. season. Well, I'll be and doing next season as well. And next, yeah, exactly. Got another one now. Got a bit more time. A bit more time on your plate now. A few races left. I've got a few more now to have a go at it. So we'll see. Brilliant. We wish you all the best for the rest of the season. Congratulations again on the new deal. Alex, thank you Cheers, so much, mate. mate. Thank Good you very much. A huge thanks to Jonathan and Alex and the KRT media team for allowing us the time. And I hope you found that as interesting as we did. It's a tough season for the men in green on track. And I appreciate their honesty with our questions. We'd love a longer sit down with both Jonathan and Alex, and hopefully we can do that after the season's over. Next week, it's another double dose of shows, you lucky, lucky people. On Tuesday, it's former Grand Prix rider, senior TT winner and manager over the years to riders such as Neil Hodgson, James Toseland, Jonathan Ray and Sam Lowe's. It is the good Lord Roger Burnett. 
We had hoped to have his great mate Roger Marshall alongside him, but he was called away last minute for an important wiring job. But the great thing about that is we get to go and do it all again. I hope the show gave you an insight into the man himself before Reg joins the fray, hopefully sometime next month or early September. Then on Thursday, reigning British Superbike champion Bradley Ray drops in to tell us how his World Superbike year is shaping up and just how the learning process is going with the Moto X race in Yamaha R1. It's a really interesting insight into just how different the World Superbike spec machine is to the OMG Racing BSB spec machine of last season. And if you're really interested and you're still awake at this point, the following Tuesday, MIE Racing Honda Taz McKenzie. And the following Thursday, it is the SMR pair of Tom Sykes and Sean Muir to round off our World Superbike <laughs> audio shows from Donington Park. Still not bitter, honest. We've four shows penciled in for Brands Hatch, so there's no shortage of shows coming your way over the next few weeks. As always, if you love what we do, like, share, follow, subscribe, and also let your friends and neighbours know. As I said earlier, we'll be back next week, so until then, as always, look after yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>